Okay, you're doing great, but what if you've put the wrong component in the wrong spot, or you've put an electrolytic capacitor in backwards, or you're repairing a piece of equipment and you need to remove some solder? Well, you need to get a component off the board or off of wherever it's soldered to. So there are uh, uh, electric uh, reworking stations with solder pumps and things like that. If you're just starting out in the hobby, you're probably not going to have a lot of rework. If you do, you'll want to investigate a piece of equipment like that. But for just a hobbyist, a little inexpensive solder pump like this is amazing. So you load the pump, you bring up your solder temperature a little bit hotter than when you put on the solder in the first place. So let's work on this capacitor. So. I brought the temperature up to 380C, which is about 710 Fahrenheit. You actually need to have a little bit of solder on the tip to make sure you get um, a good heat connection. And we're going to bring the iron in. We're going to heat up the joint or the solder pad. And we're just going to come in and snap off that liquid solder. Now. You've got to keep these pumps clean. So the first thing you do is you hold it over the garbage can. I can't show you because the garbage can is not here so on my far right. And you, you just basically drop the plunger back down while you're over the can and that will drop things out. Pumps, all kinds of pumps, whether they're electric or manual, need to be kept clean. So you need to open them up after um, a round of deep desoldering. So a couple of jobs you don't bother cleaning it up but if you've done a lot of desoldering you've got to keep the pump completely clean. So work carefully, use gloves, do this outside, do it over a garbage can and um, yeah so there's nothing to it uh, but what you might have to do is you might have to come in a couple of times with the pump to get the last little bits. Now the pump is great for getting large chunks off, but what about the last little bits? So that's where uh, uh, solder wicking tape is really brilliant. And it's just a copper braid. And I'm gonna show you how to use it. So believe it or not, it won't work well unless it's got some solder on it. I know, it's crazy. Uh, soldering irons don't solder well unless the tip has got solder on it. <laughs> it's, it's a thing. So just put a little solder on the tip and just come in here and just get a little bit of solder going on your wick. And now you can bring it over and you can press it on. Now be careful, the wick gets hot. So you want to be a little bit further back. Now you can press it on and the wick will actually, it'll just draw up that last little bit of solder. Neat, huh? Let's do the big blob just so you see how that works. And there you go. We got, look how much solder we pulled off. Now what you do, of course, is you go to a fresh spot a little further along as you get further, closer and closer to cleaning. Now, when you get really close, if your component's not coming off, you can come in like this. Now, I didn't do a thorough desoldering job, partly because I wanted to show you this trick and partly because I don't want this video to go on for an hour. So it takes time to desolder properly so you don't wreck the component or the pad. So I've come in, I'm heating the component, and now I can pull the component through over here. Even though we didn't get all the solder off, I can heat up the pad and I can, can, can just pull the component off. And let me see if I got you on camera. It's a little tough to film something like this. And there, we're off. And we probably can straighten those leads and save this. Now, if this was a used component, we would change it, of course. And if we've really mucked up the component, we should change it. And now you can come and take your wick and you can finish cleaning this up. Now, when you're desoldering, be really careful not to put too much force on prying components off the board on too much um, heat on the pads. 
It's better to take your time because if you put too much heat on the pads, you're going to lift the pads and wreck the board. And you don't want to do that. Okay, well, th that's pretty much it. That's how to solder and how to desolder. What about when the board is, um, is all done? What do we do with that flux? Well, when we come back, we'll finish up. Okay, so with no clean uh, flux, you can actually leave the board just like this. The flux uh, won't conduct electrically and it'll be fairly safe, but it's not the best practice. And the um, removing the flux is a good idea. So, and it's a bit of a job. So this should be done outside in full ventilation, set up a little work area outside. Uh, we have a little workbench we set up outside that's just great for this kind of job. You're gonna need a solvent like acetone this is very dangerous stuff. It should always be kept in a sealed container in an outbuilding, not in the house. You should use proper gloves. These are nitrile gloves. Um, don't use inexpensive gloves. And basically, um, you, you will take a little bit of acetone. You'll have a, a little tiny um, plastic tub any kind of a little plastic tub, like the little caps that you get on laundry detergent bottles, just make sure they're clean of detergent. You never know what a solvent is going to react to. Get a nylon brush like this. Any kind of scrubby brush that the acetone won't dissolve will work good. Um, you actually carry a set of three different kinds of brushes in the store, but you can find these all over the place and dip this into a little bit of acetone and then scrub away. Come back and wipe off, do it again and keep doing it until you get all of that sticky stuff off and then come back with 99% isopropyl alcohol on a clean rag and do some more cleanup. And at this point you're almost done and the alcohol will really help to just clean off the last of the gunk. Let me repeat, do this outside. Dispose of your rags safely. They're a fire hazard. So don't bring them into um, an enclosed space. What I do with solvent coated rags is I just drape them on a sawhorse outside in the open air. Don't never pile up rags. They can self combust. And once the solvent's evaporated, then the rag is relatively safe to throw in the garbage can outside. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's basically all there is to it. Uh, if you've gotten this far and your board is looking as good as mine is, <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit of a schmozzle because... Uh, we we're putting components where they weren't actually designed to go. We're just trying to learn how to solder, right? Um, you've done really well, and um, you've got more... Com I just touched on about half the components in the bag. You've got more components to practice with. Practice um, time and temperature. That is the key to learning how to solder. And you'll once you start to have a nice wet out of the solder and a nice flattened volcano, um, you, you will be on well on your way to being a pro. Well done everyone and uh, I hope that uh, your next step is to build one of our kits because they they are amazing. They sound fantastic. Charles and I are both audiophiles so we put a lot of effort into how they sound but we also put a lot of effort into building quality kits that go together easily that are um, that are designed to be repairable and yeah and that sound great and of course I forgot to mention there's a companion video to um, to this learn how to solder and it's basically to learn how to crimp how to tin wire how to install wire how to install shrink it's a much shorter video than learning how to solder which is you know, it's a, it's a pretty big topic. There's, there's probably college classes um, for techs that are just learning how to solder. <laughs> um, yeah, so check out that video as well. And all of the, um, all of the uh, supplies that we used 
uh, are all listed below the video, so that you could you don't need to take notes during the video. You 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 can just take a look at at the notes below the video, and you'll you'll see the solder and flux and everything that we like to use. Okay, cheers, everyone.